How's it going, everybody, and welcome to Just Nobody's Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan. And I'm your host, Daniel. And today we're doing a podcast. Woo! If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We post every Friday. And hit the like button while you're at it. Also, comment what you want us to talk about. We're going to be taking screenshots of your comments, and we're going to be putting it over the video, and we're going to be talking about what you want us to talk about. We're going to be talking about some juicy things today. I'm going to be talking about a Harry Potter theory, and I'm going to be breaking down some urban legends. And I'm also going to be talking about how some of the toys you had as a kid might be evil. Also, I'm going to be talking about the new Disney Plus show, Hawkeye, which I got to see early, and you did not. I did not, because he <laughs> kept it from me. Well, let's get into it. Okay, so starting off with the evil toys. So I got this from Most Amazing Top 10. Okay. And I want to start off with Furbies. Oh, I remember Furbies. Furbies were so freaky. But they were like one of the most popular toys of their time. Yeah, they came out in 1998. When parents bought Furbies for their kids, they started to realize that it sounded a little bit funny. Like the words that it was saying sounded a little bit funky and their kids started saying inappropriate words too. What? So when you listen to a Furby, yeah. it sounds like it's saying what the F. F yeah. word you mean? Yeah, what the F word. <laughs> and then sometimes it would say F word you. Are you serious? Yeah, so the kids were going around the house saying these things. Oh and the parents gosh. were like, where are they learning this from? And then they, they remembered, I got my kid a Furby. Let me listen to what the Furby's saying. And the Furby was literally saying these words. Was this like happening to like a lot of people that had Furbies? Or? Yeah, it was happening to a lot of people. Oh, See, weird. Yeah. But Furby, the, the company that made Furbies denied it, right? They, they're saying like it's just mumbled words. Like it's not even like English. Of course they're going to deny it. Right. But isn't that crazy? How did all these kids learn how, the, learn how to say the F word and then now the Furby's denying it? They served their purpose. They taught all the kids the F word. Gosh, I... I hate Furbies. Furbies were so scary. They are scary when you think about it. Like, they're these furry ball-looking birds, right? Yeah. And their eyes would just stare right into your eyes like a death stare. Right. Okay, so on to the next one. In 2015, McDonald's released, like, these little minion toys, right? They had a bunch of different ones dressed in a bunch of different outfits, okay? Like, from the movie, Despicable Me. Right, right, from Despicable Me. Okay. I kind of remember those Happy Meal toys. Yeah. It was a while ago, but... There was one minion that was dressed as a caveman, okay? okay? And when you would bang the, their feet on the table, they would make, like, a sound. Okay. But it literally sounds like it's saying, what the F word, when you bang it. <laughs> and all these parents were making videos of it banging on, on the desk, and it was saying, what the F. What the F. Yeah. And you know, like, minions, oh, we don't know what minions are saying in the movie. Like, they just talk, like, gibberish. Right. But when you listen to the toy, it literally sounds like it's saying, what the F? It was all over the news. That's really weird. Yeah, and McDonald's had to, like, come out and, like, apologize, saying, like, no, we're sorry that it sounds offensive, but it's not our intention. It was nothing like that. Speaking of McDonald's, if this video gets 2,000 likes, Daniel and I, <laughs> who are brothers, will go to McDonald's and get married there, and I'm going to pay for it, and we're going to film it. Hit the thumbs up, and we're, if we get 2,000 likes, we will go to McDonald's Mc and get married. McDonald's wedding. It's yeah. sad that these are coming in Happy Meals. Right. Okay, this next one is crazy. Absolutely. Cr I thought this one was ridiculous. What is it? Okay, so th these parents have a newborn baby, right? Okay. And they bought this device that plays like ocean noises for the baby to like help go to sleep. Uh-huh. But when you would listen to it closely, it whispers, I hate you. I hate you. That's really weird. Right? I feel bad for whoever's listening to this right now. They just heard you say, I hate you. But the parents thought it was just defective. Like, they were like, maybe we're not hearing it right. Are you kidding me? No. Yeah. So they thought, they're like, let's just go take it back and tell the workers, like, we want a different one. Talk about some dumb parents, huh? Right. But then the workers said they heard it too. They literally heard it. And they opened up another one, did the same thing. Are you serious? And then they opened up another one, did the same thing. It's so weird to think about because I know mom and dad got me one of those when I was younger. Really? Yeah, it would play ocean sounds. It might have been telling you that hates you, man. My gosh, it makes me hate myself. Why would they even have such a thing? Right, I don't get, what's the point of even doing that? It's supplemental messaging. Like, that's crazy. On to the next one. Okay, everybody knows Elmo. Everybody knows Tickle Me Elmo, right? Yeah, I mean, I Those don't know. were pretty freaky. <laughs> Tickle me Elmo. Yeah, it just doesn't even sound right. But in 2008, they released one called Elmo Knows Your Name. I, I don't know about this one. Okay, it sounds weird, right? Elmo Knows Your Name, right? Yeah, how does it know? So when parents would buy this for their kids, 
they would tell like you can put it in a speaker and you tell it the kid's name and it would repeat it it would repeat it in elmo's voice right oh, okay so this parent got it for her son and she found out it wasn't sounding right just like all these other toys and it was saying the kid's name was james and it was saying kill james kill james kill what? james and her son started repeating it and that's how she like she was like what what are you saying so every time he would hit play on the elmo it wouldn't say hi james it'd say kill, kill james kill james like it, it would record just the name right but put kill in front of it it's crazy how like the developers of the toy can't even say that that was a mistake it's purposely there if you were meant to have elmo say hi james right that's one thing yeah but to say kill james does not sound like hi james right and i'm sure they have like different like phrases that elmo would say with the name so it was probably like hidden you know what i mean like it probably had like 10 different phrases and it was just one of those 10 phrases what a easter egg huh that is so wrong so on to the next one in 2016 okay remember when we were kids We'd have that like little Velcro and like tennis ball, right? It would have like a Velcro pad and you throw the tennis ball and you play catch with it. Like the oh ball my would gosh, stick yeah. to it, right? So these two kids were playing. These two brothers were playing it. The Velcro started to wear away. Like it started to peel off the pad. Yeah, I just remember eventually the ball would no longer stick. It would right. always just fall off. Right. But his was the stitching came loose, right? Okay. So he peeled back the Velcro and it was a picture of a little kid saying, take this. And it said the S word and then it said head. Like, take this S head S head. Yeah. <laughs> what is that from? It's nothing. It's just a picture that was hidden under the thing, under the Velcro. Oh, my gosh. We should all try to, like, rip up bars and see if it's there. I know. That's so wrong, though. How do you even how do you even, what's the point of putting that in some, a toy? I know because you got to figure all the different steps. They had to get the image. They had to manufacture them and put them all in between behind the leather or whatever. I bet you that picture. For the manufacturing and everything and like the way they designed it yeah cost thousands of dollars just to even put right but what it's like you know kids are gonna play with it so why even have it that is so crazy we have to go through our old toys and like see if there's any other stuff in there honestly because i remember we had an elmo toy that would talk no i know i mean we had a yoda toy that would talk to you remember oh yoda my gosh that, the would, yoda that would tell stories and stuff yeah sometimes oh my gosh okay it's so creepy but i would I would throw it in my closet because I was so scared of it. Oh, I remember those days. But it would go off in my closet. Oh, my gosh. It's so funny. I remember one time I would like I was in my room and Daniel was in his room. And all of a sudden I heard this big bang. Right. Yeah. I'm like, what is that? He's like, Yoda was just doing too much talking. Right. So he threw him in his closet and there's still like a dent in his wall where he threw it. <laughs> but I remember sitting there. I'm like, Daniel, don't worry. It's just a toy. And all of a sudden Yoda goes. Do you want to hear a story? Yeah. I was like, what the heck? It just starts talking out of nowhere. It was so scree. It was really creepy. Yeah. Because it would go off in the closet where nobody was opening the closet and nobody was around. And you would just hear Yoda talking in the closet by himself. Oh, my gosh. That gives me goosebumps still. Think about that. How do you even get that processed and like, okay, this is good to ship out. Let's get it to these targets and Toys R Us's and let the kids have it. Because you imagine opening up that, opening that up on Christmas. And you just see your Furby going, F you, F you, F you, F you. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Okay, on to a lighter note. So this week I talked about a, a hack in life that we all need, okay? Growing up, we've all written essays. You know, there's the teacher that always puts that crazy word count, 800 words or whatever it is. And we always struggle, right? As you yeah. know, I already told you oh, this. But this one's good. As we, as we all struggle to try to make that word count. So I wrote down... Some things that I found on how to make your essays longer. Yeah, so Young DM did a video, and basically what he did was, instead of writing just the word because, write the particular reason for the circumstance, and then, because we all use the word because. Because oh. the earth is round. Because it's hot outside, right? The amount of times I use because is ridiculous. Instead of writing this means, write this actively demonstrates that. See, that, that, <laughs> it, it's crazy that you can extend it that long right i mean that's over time you'll generate a lot of words that exactly because i've never had a substitute for because when you write the words in conclusion instead write to sum up everything that has been stated so far <laughs> <laughs> and then instead of writing the word for write for the exact purpose of 
And instead of writing the word like, write along the lines of. I mean, this will sh- for sure help everybody. I feel like extend their essays. That's for sure. Oh, 100%. It's for like when you're in that moment where you're like 300 words away or 400 words away. Don't be doing it like every sentence because, you know, teacher's going to be like, why are, you, why are you talking like that? As a college student, I'm writing a lot of papers right now, especially because finals is coming up. And this actually has helped me. You will thank me later, guys, or you will hate me later. I'm not sure, depending on how your teacher grades. <laughs> guys, it works. It works. I want to start talking about some crazy cartoon theories. Do you know the Peter Pan theory? No. Okay, so we know in Peter Pan, we all love Peter Pan. We all love the Lost Boys, and we want them to beat Captain Hook. Peter Pan brings more kids to Neverland, where he tells them you'll never grow up and we could always live as kids here. But there's a crazy theory that Peter Pan is the evil one and Captain Hook is the hero. (laughs) What? Okay, so the reason why they never grow old is because Peter Pan actually kills them. And the reason why Captain Hook and all of his crew is old is because they were part of the Lost Boys, but they escaped because they figured out what Peter Pan was doing. Captain Hook's crew, they're all like grown adults. They're all old. Right. And the reason why Captain Hook is always fighting Peter Pan and he's always trying to kidnap the Lost Boys, right? He's always trying to take them. Yeah. Is because he's trying to save them. He knows what Peter Pan is trying to do, but the Lost Boys don't. Oh. So he's trying to save them by taking them away. And letting them grow up. That makes a lot of sense. Because he has an obsession with trying to save those kids. Right. He always tries to take the Lost Boys. Right. And Peter Pan is the, always the one to get in between that. He doesn't want Peter Pan. No. He doesn't want Peter Pan. He wants the Lost Boys. Captain Hook might be the hero of this movie. I feel like the dark theories are definitely more interesting than the ones that are, like, fun. Yeah, I feel like the dark theories make movies better, I feel. Yeah. Okay, so have you ever heard of the Danny Phantom Theory? That he's Timmy Turner? Okay, no, not that one. I said that one before, but this one's a way darker theory. Okay, so we know how Danny Phantom got his powers, right? He, explore, he was exploring his parents' lab, and he went into that machine, and it gave him his ghost powers, right? Right. But there's a crazy theory that that incident, that, that accident that he was in, yeah. actually put him in a coma. And the entire show is just him in a coma. And it's just him fighting for his life. So when he goes into ghost mode, right, he's going ghost, it's just him fighting for his life. And that's when he's almost going to die on the hospital bed. Oh, wow. And when he's just in the regular coma, right, it's just him thinking about what his regular life would be like. And that's what we see in the show when he's in high school and everything. I love Danny Phantom and Timmy Turner, but this one absolutely destroyed Danny Phantom for me. Yeah, I never even thought about that. He could be in a coma, that's for sure. Have you heard of the Harry Potter theory? There's a theory that Harry Potter is connected with Mary Poppins. What? I mean, growing up, we've all seen Mary Poppins, right? Right. In the books, it was stated that this magic bag, right, that Mary Poppins has, right, was used by a, an old wizard in the Hufflepuff family. Mary Poppins would be in the Hufflepuff family because she's, like, happy, she's... She's all about doing good, working hard, and being a good person. Right. It could make sense that the, the wizard they're talking about a long time ago in the Hufflepuff family was Mary Poppins because Mary Poppins came out in the 60s, which would make sense that she's old, an old wizard. Wait, what the heck? And we see Hermione have a similar bag with magical powers where she oh my a bunch gosh. of stuff. We watched Mary Poppins all the time when we were younger. And, like, her magical umbrella. You know, like, the one where she's flying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, basically, if we look at, like, the movies, Hagrid, he has a magic umbrella, too, where he can, like, use it as, like, a wand and, like, cast magic. Oh, my gosh. I remember that. Isn't that nuts, though? That is too much of a comparison to not be connected. I feel like J.K. Rowling probably wrote that into, this, like, her books because she was inspired by Mary yeah. Poppins, and she wants to have her, like, be in the same universe. Because she would have probably graduated from Hogwarts around, like, the 50s and then mary poppins happens in the 60s oh and then harry comes in gosh. in the 90s i was fortunate enough to watch hawkeye early the first two episodes of hawkeye were amazing and, and he kept it from me by now everyone's seen it i'm just gonna spoil it for you the opening scene is a young kate bishop she's in her family's apartment in new york all of a sudden a title like a title thing comes on it says 2012 it's the fight of new york it's back to avengers are you serious and she sees hawkeye in the distance hawkeye actually saves her life because an alien's coming right at her he blows him up 
she sees him shooting, and then she sees him do the iconic move where he jumps off the roof. Oh my, are you serious? Yeah, I hate to ruin it for you, but that's like, it was really cool. What? <laughs> and I think it's one of the best Marvel shows. Oh my god. If you ask me. Okay, I love Haley Seinfeld. I think she's going to kill this, and obviously, from your reaction, she obviously did. Yeah, I think it's a really good show. In the second episode, it ends with an introduction of Echo. And Echo is a character from the Daredevil comics. So there's a theory that Kingpin from Daredevil, the Daredevil series in yeah. the show, is going to be in Hawkeye. Echo, her character in the comics, her dad was killed by Kingpin. Really? Yeah, so it only kind of makes sense that they write that into like the show. And we know that Echo is getting her own show on Disney+, Plus, so it makes sense that eventually Kingpin will show up. Daredevil's going to be in No Way Home. Spider-Man No Way Home. Okay, yeah, he's definitely in it. There's leaks of Charlie Cox sitting at a table with Aunt May, Peter Parker, and Happy Hogan, and he's in it. Peter will need a lawyer, Daredevil's a lawyer, and he's going to help him. And it's been confirmed that Charlie Cox will be coming back for some Marvel projects. We don't know which ones, but they're coming. See, this is why I feel like the future of like Marvel and Disney is so bright because they're doing these shows. Yeah, and the shows are really good. Yeah, these shows are so good. It gives so much backstory. I just, I love the idea that Marvel has these shows, right? Yeah. Where they actually bring the actors from the movies onto the TV show, which we've never seen before. We were going crazy for Loki. Oh, yeah. Loki was great. I'm telling you guys, Loki is probably one of the most important shows in the MCU right now. Yeah. If you haven't seen Loki, you definitely got to go watch it. What's really cool about Hawkeye, they really explored what it's like to be a superhero in the MCU. He witnesses people dressing up as Ant-Man in like the Avengers, uh -huh. right? And they're glamorizing it. And like even he goes out to a restaurant with his family and the restaurant owner wants to pay for his dinner because he's like, thank you for saving New York. Well, it's that time when we do this segment called Whose Side Are You On? Where my girlfriend Leia comes on and tells a real life story from Reddit where we talk about two different people, right? One person complains about the other person and we're going to see who's right and who's wrong. Let's do it. Leia's in the house. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Whose side are you on? So this is a girl versus her friend. Am I wrong for exposing my friend as a catfish? Whoa! My friend bought my old phone from me, and to get a discount, we combined our phone plans. She ended up with my old number, and I got a new phone. In the process, I had several relationships that I decided I was ready to cut ties with and figured getting a new phone was a perfect opportunity to ghost them. Parentheses, I recognize ghosting people is rude, but that's not the point of this. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a couple months, and my friend kept asking me strange questions, and I realized she's been texting the individuals I had chosen to cut ties with and was pretending to be me. What? <laughs> what a friend. <laughs> but even more, she's been emotionally manipulating them. She's made them think I was hospitalized and getting them to pour their hearts out to her. Goodness. <laughs> she's also been using casual pictures I send her as a way to pretend she's me. Like if I send her a picture of me laying down on the couch, she will forward that to my other friends, making it look like she's me. She has also been using texting apps to pretend to be other people in my life to propitiate the stories about me being literally on my deathbed and whatnot. So naturally, I told everyone that she has been texting like, hey, those conversations you've been having with me weren't actually with me. I'm not dying, etc. I'm so sorry this has happened to you. And my friend is so upset with me saying it wasn't my place to expose her. But she like she's freaking stealing my identity and manipulating people for her own amusement. Am I wrong for telling people she's a catfish? No. Oh my god. <laughs> what? what the heck is that? What is that? This is this is too crazy. Okay, that friend should be ashamed of herself. That what you are a weirdo. You're, like you're, that's stealing. like identity theft. Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't assume your friend would go text the people that you were like, yeah, talking who, who to. Who in their right mind would do that? That's like, make weird. sure you comment who you feel is right and who's wrong. But I feel like there's obviously a winner. Saying yeah. that she was hospitalized and stuff like that's nothing to joke about. Just to get a sense of attention. How long did she get away with this for? I know. Are we talking like a couple weeks, a month? Because if you got away with it for that long... It's been a couple months. Months? Oh, my god! Months? You could do a lot in a month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the friend comes back. I promise I won't do it again. And she's like, is that your, is that your MacBook over there? Oh can, my I, can I borrow it? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Hey, what's your password to this? Yeah, the one that got their phone stolen or taken and used for the wrong reasons. 
Yep. That oh, <laughs> that is so weird to me. All right, Leia. Thank you very much. Woo, Leia. Thank you for that great story. This week on TikTok, I talked about they looked at the top 300 most wealthiest people, most successful people, and they found which month produces the most successful people out of the year. So in last place, we have November. 11th place is December. 10th place is February. 9th place is August. And in 8th place is March. 7th place is May. In 6th place, we have September. 5th place is April. 4th place is January. 3rd place is July. 2nd place is June. And in 1st place, surprisingly, is October. See, I was just one month away. One month away from being first place. I know. But you, you told me about this, that Bill Gates was actually born in October. Yeah. It makes, makes total sense. sense. Makes sense. I mean, I don't know what day or month Jeff Bezos was born in or Elon Musk, but... Come on, Bill Gates, though? Yeah, he's the OG. I'm going to talk about some urban legends. A couple weeks ago, I talked about skinwalkers. And basically, there's an urban legend that these creatures look like humans, and they roam around the earth, and they kill people. What's scary about these skinwalkers is they pretend to be normal people. They tend to be in the woods, and they scream like, help me, help me, help. And people are like, oh my gosh, someone needs help. So they go and try to help them. But when they go try to help them, the skinwalker kills them. They don't know English. They don't know how to speak words. All they know is what their previous victims said to them last. They memorize what their victims say to them. So they said, help me. The skinwalker goes around saying, help me, help me, help me. Oh, it's so creepy. People have actually caught video of them. But he walks like he's hurt. Yeah, you know like, help I mean? me. But it's weird. That's all they say. Oh, my gosh. I'm getting two spikes. Have you heard of the urban legend about the dog boy? No. So basically, there's like this kid, right, who is now 300 pounds, half man, half dog. What? As a kid, he did some crazy things. He killed animals, and he would take their remains and eat them and do weird things with them. So eventually, he changed over time. The reason why they call him a dog boy is because he did some like crazy stuff with animals, and he killed his dad. It actually happens in Arkansas. He's in Arkansas. He was last seen in 1998. Have you heard of the skunk ape? The what? So there's this urban legend in Florida of this thing called a skunk ape. And basically, it looks like Bigfoot. Dude, the name just sounds weird. So apparently, the people that have seen it said it's like between five to seven feet tall and 450 pounds. So it's huge. And the reason why like, they're able to identify it, it stinks. And people say it smells like trash rotting. <laughs> so not only do they eat people, uh-huh. but they eat like berries and small animals. And they call it the skunk ape? Yeah, and people have actually said they've seen it. Stop it. Yeah. So if you see something huge and it smells like rotting trash, you better run. Okay, skunk ape? Yeah, I just Come wonder. On. Skunk ape. Yeah. It's kind of weird. It's really weird, actually. It's scary to think about that some of like, these people have actually seen. Right. Like, it's out there. Okay, if someone, if I came to Florida and someone told me, look out for skunk ape, I'd be like, what do you mean skunk ape? What is that? What's scary is that it could be a crazy person that's huge, that eats people, that doesn't shower, and they just stink. Okay, that, that's scary, right? Okay, that could okay, be real. Okay, okay. That could be real. Okay. That could be any state. No, but see what the weird thing is, too, about urban legends? It's not like one person's like crying wolf, you know? Right. It's a bunch of people that say this. And usually a bunch of people are saying it and it's over a period of time, right? Where it becomes like a legend where people like are always saying like, hey, be, be careful. We've, we've been known for like the last 50 years that this happens. But Ryan, I think it's about that time. Oh, my favorite time. <laughs> Welcome to Dumb Ways to Die. I just feel so like it's sickening to know like, that's the way they went out. We get into some weird ones. Oh, gosh. A man had a pet pigeon. Okay. okay. So he lived with his pet pigeon. He would live with his pigeon. He loved his pigeon. But one day, it just decided to go chill on the telephone wire. He's okay. charging. He, yeah. He's charging. The owner was like, okay, it's time to come inside. It looks like it's going to start raining and stuff. Like, I don't want you to get hurt. Okay. So he decided to try to get it down. Okay. He doesn't try to throw a shoe at it or anything, throw something at it. He's like, let me get a metal rod and try to poke it down. Let me just try to hit the wire and see if it bounces off. Okay. 
I think I know how this is going to go. He hit the wire with the metal rod. <laughs> Dead. Thanks for the sound effect. <laughs> I really needed that. Just he, he electrocuted himself by using a metal rod. Yeah. With the telephone wire. I figured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What in your right? Who in their right mind thinks that's okay? Do you know if the pigeon survived? No, I don't. I think the pigeon got fried because of that. Oh my gosh! At least, at least they went together. Yeah. Okay, so the next one. Okay. This man really wanted to go see some animals at a zoo. Okay. Okay, but he's like, these tickets are so overpriced. I have to pay two hundred dollars just to go see some animals in some cages, right? That's kind of how a zoo works. So he's like, you know what? I'm not going to buy a ticket. I'm going to hop the fence. Nice. Right? It's a pretty high fence. He's like, I'm going to hop the fence. So he's climbing up the fence. He lands. He's like, I made it. I made it into the zoo. No one caught me. I saved five bucks. I, yeah. Come on. He looks around. He goes, this doesn't look right. And then he notices there's five tigers in there with him. Brian, he literally jumped into the tiger exhibit. Oh, my gosh. Five tigers. Jump on him. Five tigers for five dollars. Yeah. Come on, man. What was he thinking though? He could have just when he got up there, just looked down. Oh, probably shouldn't jump down there. Yeah, I s- let me count how many tigers there are before I jump. So this one, someone was driving to the grocery store, and you know how people like bring their own grocery bags, right? Like yeah. they don't always want to buy the bag for like right, ten cents, so they bring their own. Reusable ones. Right. So this person was on their way to the grocery store, but they found out, oh, I forgot my bags. Uh-huh. So I need to go back and get them. But let me check the trunk to see if they're in there, just in case. Okay. Okay? So the person unbuckles their seatbelt, gets out of the car, opens the trunk, right? The one thing they forgot to do was to put the car in park. The car rolls back on them. Oh, my gosh. And squishes them. Great. You would think that's the, that's the one thing you do when you stop a car. What a what a way to go. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all the support on TikTok. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you're listening on Spotify and Apple Music or Apple Podcasts, it would help a lot if you leave a five-star review and leave a review. Talk about it. What's your favorite part? What do you guys want us to talk about next? And, guys, we're going to be pinning your comments on the screen whenever you suggest something and we do your comments. So, for today, we talked about the Harry Potter theory. That was suggested in the comments, actually. Woo. So, guys, if, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate you guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow on TikTok. We'll see you on the TikTok. God bless you guys. See ya. Love ya.